Zing Chow, hello, 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 it's Indy. So today was, is my uh, first day kind of by myself um, at the language center. And uh, yeah, we taught some kids, we taught them Fs. So face, feet, foot, all the different Fs. And then capital F, little F, big F, little F. And, uh, yeah, you know, it, uh, it actually went better than I thought. So these classes are like 80 minutes long, right? Seems like a long time, but you just get into the rhythm. Yeah. You just get into the, you just get into the, the, the zone. So I I just kind of like zone out. So that's a trick for some of you teachers too. If you are nervous, if you're scared, if you don't know what to do, just zone out. Just go into autopilot. Just, you know, let, let your, uh, your subconscious take over. And it will guide you, and you'll make it through. But anyways, so yeah, uh, I have another class at 3 till 5. And, um, yeah, there's been a lot, a lot of cool updates that I found out. Spoke to some recent friends lately. Thought that there's some, some, been some changes from some old jobs. Some uh, some people changed up. Some drama here. Some drama here. Drama there. Things are always changing in Vietnam. Uh, I also had a debate with somebody called Ninja Teacher. Not a debate, but a friendly conversation about his programs. This guy he uh, he offers a service where he'll hire he'll You'll pay a bunch of money, and they'll come send you out to Ho Chi Minh City with a, bu- a bunch of young, attractive people, right? And they'll get you a TFL certificate and do this training, and you get to hang out. It's like, you know, it's like summer camp, or it's like, you know, party camp. I'm sure you go out and drink at nights. But if you ever notice, if you ever watch, and, I, and I'm watching you, bro. I, I'm catching on to you, man. I, I notice most of the people you hire or you that you uh, recruit for your program are young, attractive females. Why is that? That's very suspicious. Hmm. Could you have alternative motives? Hey, man, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? So, hey, whatever. But, anyways, so yeah, I, I look at I look at people. Not down. I, I don't look down on people who teach in places like Ho Chi Minh City or the big cities where there's every single luxury that you could think of, where there's every single comfort you could think of. Where how can you even distinguish it from being in America? You're, you could have whole communities dedicated just just to Western people. You you can go somewhere and never hear anybody speak Vietnamese. You never eat Vietnamese food. So what is the point of doing this if you live in these comfort zones, if you stay in these little bubbles? So I challenge, I challenge all you, all you ninja teacher recruits. I te- I challenge any of you future teachers, any of you people who want to come out here and teach in Vietnam. I challenge you to dig deep like I did. Not to brag, not to say that I'm cool because you know, or I'm a better teacher because I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that I challenge you to actually experience what real Vietnam is like, and it is not full of shopping malls, and it is not full of movie theaters and and uh, tofu and vegan luxury dining five-star hotels and whatever else things that you probably find in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, Yeah, so any of you, look, the chances of you guys finding my channel, you know, I I typed in teaching English um, in Vietnam on YouTube just to see if any of my videos come up. And there's so many people who, who have given their advice, their perspectives. But I have one thing that's unique that 99% of those other teachers do not on my channel. It's location. 
If you notice, 99% of those other teachers who have made videos, you know, were, except for this dude called, uh, uh Nomad, Did you, New York Nomad, that's my homie, shout out to you, shout out to you, man, hope you're doing good, you're like in Albania now or something, yeah, this dude's cool, man, He tat, he's tatted out, bald hair, but, um, all you other, um, how to teach in Vietnam, pros and cons in, in Vietnam, you, you all do it from the comforts of, you're from Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or Dalat or Halong Bay or all these other touristy spots, you know? I have not met one person on YouTube who's been in the sticks, who's been in the countryside, like, who, who is teaching at least, making YouTube videos like I am. I am literally on the China border. I can see China from my window. Uh... My city, Lao Cai, Sapa, trust me, there is nowhere else in Vietnam you're going to experience uh, experience the things that you'll see, the kind of people that you'll meet, uh, the way that dating goes is so much different. There's no hookup culture here. I mean, yeah, there might be on, on the low, but it's not like it's not like these disgusting cities of, of what, what is it, the phone thing, the phone apps and people hedonistic you know what i mean like here there's it's a whole different experience and i challenge you i challenge you any of you future teachers deciding you know thinking about coming to vietnam don't do it it, it doesn't count if you come out here and yet you, you you're always comfortable it does not count if you come all the way out here Yet, you never have to learn how to speak Vietnamese. You never have to try blood soup like I made a video yesterday about trying blood soup. It's solidified cow blood soup. So I challenge you. I challenge you, fools, man. Push yourselves. What is the point? So all of us travelers, right? Be it from the these ninja teachers, um, you know, young hipster, you know, uh, to the older, a lot of, I'm, I've met a lot of South Africans. A lot South Africans are probably my favorites uh, when it comes to the expats that I've met, just because like they they get it. You know what I mean? Like they're like me. Like being out here is better than being in their own country. And that might be hard for you to hear, but f yeah, could you believe that? You know what I mean? Like for me to say that, like if you well. You wouldn't know me, obviously, but um, I've always been very patriotic. I've always been a strong supporter in America, loved my country, have my car, motorcycle, friends, family. I've traveled to every state, but I don't believe in our elections anymore. Our prices, inflation, corruption's too high. Everything's just going bad in my country. And the price of living... Uh, it, it's just insane. Crimes going up. We have a, a illegitimate, illegitimate president, in my opinion. Trump is our president, in my opinion. That is my opinion. So don't ban me, YouTube, for having an opinion. See, that's another thing. Whoever thought we live in a world where censorship, where an American would have to watch what he says, like that goes against our First Amendment right of free speech. The only country in the world that has guaranteed free speech. I could go up to the President of the United States and tell him to kiss my ass. And there could be nothing he could do about it. He can't. But you try doing that somewhere like, you know, I, I, Iraq or Iran. You try doing that somewhere like in, you know, uh, some of these, you know, more dictator North Korean, you know, countries. Try saying that to the government, you know, you'll be disappeared real quick. But who would have ever thought how quickly the world has changed? And especially when it comes, when it came to, what, what happened to all this, this pandemic scare? What happened to all these injections you people, you know, were, you know, that they, they were pushing on to us? You notice how quiet they've gotten about that? You don't hear about it now, do you? Oh, get your 20th booster. Get your 50th booster. You're all it's the end of the world. No, because people are starting to wake up and realize how much damage those things have done. Uh, I'm not going to get into that because I don't want to alienate 
my audience, but you guys got duped. A lot of you got duped. And I tried to warn the people who were closest to me. And I tried to warn, there was a time I tried to warn on social media that there was, it, you were paying attention to the left hand while getting set up for the trick of the right hand. You weren't paying attention to the right hand. And what you did to your bodies, you're going to regret. I promise you. And I had to be vague. But anyways, I'm going off subject. Back to being a teacher. Um, look, look, look. To each their own. I, I'm a strong believer in, and I'm a strong believer in freedom of choice. What you do with your body is your choice, right? I won't, I, I won't judge you. I'm not going to talk crap about you for choosing to do whatever medical procedure you want. My only issue is when you try to force your will onto me. Like, don't. You live you, I'll do me. That was my only issue from the beginning. But as for back to teaching, okay, I challenge you guys to not do these easy spots, all right? Try to find the most rural, the hardest spot, you know what I mean? Somewhere, look on the map of Vietnam. Find somewhere that you, the last spot that you would pick and just try it. See what schools are hiring, you know? Speak to your recruiter and say you want to go to a, a tier four city. So tier one cities would be like Cochin City, Hanoi, etc. Tier two would probably be you know a higher, but not as big. Tier three is um, uh, would be like Sapa, right? Tier four would be your most rural, uh, your most rural uh, country kind of places. Villages, like literally villages where you might not even have um, a shopping mall. Like, you know, you, it might be like, like here, you know. So I'm, I'm just going to tell you from my experience, the greatest thing that ever happened to me, right, was when I signed up for Apex English. It was during April of 2021, during the COVID lockdowns. And we were doing our quarantine in the hotels, in the government hotels, and that's when they were doing our training for us. And we had no say in where we where we get placed. You could write down a request, like, "Hey, I request to go to North Vietnam or South Vietnam," and then you could even ask, like, "Okay, I prefer this city," but there was no guarantees. I told my recruiter, and I told them I would literally go anywhere. I didn't care. Send me anywhere. I don't care if it's a hut, a mud hut. I want the adventure. I want the experience. I want to become mentally strong. I want to push myself, push the limits. I want to be somewhere where it's terrifyingly scared and different and alien and learn how to adapt. And that, and sure enough, I'll never forget the day. You have a journal entry of when it was decided Lao Kai. I was like, what the hell is Lao Kai? And I, it took me like five minutes to find it on the map, right? Boom, Lao Kai. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, look, to each their own. If you're in it, if you're in it just to say you've been to Vietnam and you want it easy and you want, and you want comfort and you want luxury, but you don't want to push yourself too hard. And if you're just in it for the money, and look hip and, you know, to go to the bars and all that and do your thing. But there's a certain breed of us who live our lives for an adventure, live our lives for anything besides just the routine monotony, the, the just the this soul-grinding, you know, um, daily routine of just the same, same, same that never helps you grow as a person and never challenges you and never breaks you. And I've had my spirit broken here. I've had my health broken here. I've had my mental health broken here. I've been pushed to my limits harder than even the military in some ways. And I've survived and I've grown so much from that. And there's like a sense of like accomplishment and confidence that I've gotten from that. 
to the point now where I feel like you could put me up against any school. And now that I've taught some of the hardest ways of doing it, like, you know, when you're, when, when you, when you're in a place where there is no lifelines, no friends, no family, when there's no, there's no one you could call and there's no one who's going to come to help. When there's no one to tell you how to get food, where, where even is the food? Like, it is really, 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 really going to, you know, um, toughen you up. And not only that, you are going to get the privilege of learning the authentic way of how I would say the majority of Vietnamese people live. And I can't stress that enough, how, you know, enriching that is to see how the majority, not just the wealthy, not just the city dwellers, but, you know, the, the, you know, the rural people, the, the villagers, the ethnic tribes, you know, I don't know what the percentage is. Let's say 80%, 90%. Like in America, do you think everybody lives like in New York City? Rich with, you know, thousand, two thousand dollar apartments? No. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck or in trailers or, you know, one bedroom studios, barely making it by. You know, it, I mean, it's like that here in Vietnam. Um, but to experience that, to see that, to live that, it it really gives you a unique worldview and an advantage and, that you're going to have over every other teacher that you meet. So when you do go meet some, you know, to Hanoi and you talk to one of these, you know, ninja teachers, Vietnamese or Hanoi teachers, Ho Chi Minh City, you know, one of these, you know, big, 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 big school teachers, these, you know, like they're, they're, they're like, they're going to look to you like a pro because what do they have on you? You know what I mean? Like, what do they got? You know what I mean? So what? So they have, you know, um, a bigger city to, 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 to get McDonald's, to get processed food. Yeah, well, I, you know, I've, I've literally been on the highest mountain that, you know, in Vietnam, the highest bridge in Vietnam. I've seen the rice paddies in the autumn when it turns to this beautiful shade that looks, it looks like an ocean of gold. I've seen pure sunsets and, and sunrises and the moon and the stars so clear that literally you can see planets. When it's nighttime here, you don't hear any traffic. I, I've been, I've been invited into people's homes where I've learned the customs, you know, what you say before a meal, you know, uh, the, the the privilege of being invited into a home, the privilege of being an outsider yet being welcomed by a Vietnamese family. Um, to have dinner with them or a tribe and so on. So anyways, my point is any of you future teachers, push yourself. Do not play it safe. Push yourself. Push yourself hard the first time. Get it out of the way. And it's not bad. It's not like you're not going to have fun because you will. Trust me, you will have fun. Look, at my, look back on some of my YouTube videos. Look at some of the things that I've seen and tell me that, it, you know, that's not fun. Or is going to a shopping center for the millionth time fun for you. Or look at some of my videos, some of the things that I've seen. Do that first. And then, and then, after a couple of years of you learning what it is to be Vietnamese, and you might not learn truly what it is, but you'll at least have earned some credibility. You'll earn some you know, respect. You could at least say that you tried. And you're going to have... You're going to have such a well of knowledge to use against, you know, your opponents when it comes to job seat searching, when it comes to intellectual battles, when it comes to just life experiences. So that is my advice for any of you future teachers. And that's why my channel is trying to help people who don't want Hanoi, who don't want Ho Chi Minh City, who don't want Halong Bay. There's so much more to Vietnam than these tourist traps. 
There's so many, and it's so many more beautiful. Don't get me wrong, go visit those places. But to teach and to see these kids, to see these families, to see the sea, the sunsets, it's just so different. And I challenge you to experience it. And maybe one out of a hundred of you will have the balls to do it. The cojones to do it. You know, we'll have the courage. And it's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. But I'm going to promise you after two years of doing it, I am so glad that it happened to me. I'm so glad that I did not get sent to some luxury city. So think on that. Think on that. If it's your first time traveling to a different country, if it's your first time to Vietnam, choose the hardest, most world, tier four city. Choose somewhere that's off the map. Choose somewhere that it is going to teach you what it is to live Vietnamese. Experience the culture, this amazing, beautiful culture, this amazing, friendly people. You know, and um, let me tell you, the Vietnamese people will welcome you. As long as you're a good person, honorable person of a good heart, they'll welcome you with open arms. So that's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. No hate to Ninja, teacher. Uh, like I said, I don't hate people for having a hustle. If your hustle is, you know, recruiting for Ho Chi Minh City and um, recruiting to a younger audience, then so be it. But that is my perspective as a northern teacher. Look, I, I, I see China. I've been to China. Uh, there, there's a spot where you can step on that's like China territory, Vietnamese China territory, right? How many of you could say that you've looked and seen China? I can. Yeah, how many of you can say that? How many of you do you want to say that? Just think about it, all right? So this will be part four of my teaching in Vietnam. I hope it helps. I got another class here in like an hour, so good luck, guys. Have fun. And remember, don't take it too serious. That was one of my mistakes about this whole experience. You know, don't take it too serious. Just relax. Just relax. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the na what kind of degree you get as long as it's a degree. It doesn't matter the brand name of the TIFL you get as long as it's a TIFL. It doesn't matter... You know, how many T's you cross and many I's you dot. Like, it's just, it's your heart. It's the passion. And it's about having fun. We're doing this for the, for the fun, right? For the experience. So don't get yourself so, just don't lose sight of why you came here. Like I did for a little bit. Because it will ruin it for you. And I almost gave up because of it. So I'll make another video on that. That's an important lesson, but we'll talk about that later. So, all right, guys, bye. It's Indy. And uh, good luck. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And look, help me out. I am trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. For once in my life, I want to say I hit 1,000 subscribers after seven years of having a YouTube channel. So if you like, if you've stayed this long, just hit the little sub button. I've never asked in a video. I've asked in the comments. Or leave me a like, you know. Help me out. Help me grow this channel. Because I see a dream with this channel. I have an idea for it. So if you can help me out, just click that sub button. Even if you don't even watch the videos, just help, a boy, help your boy out. So, all right, guys. Thank you. Good luck.